again, friends. It's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I was going to do a little tutorial on some collapsible boxes. Now, if you've uh, watched my channel for any time, you know that um, several months ago, I created this little flat lay envelope so that if you had little pieces of ephemera, you could very easily um, open it up and keep everything together while still looking through your items. So you can see here, um, you know, I have all these little number labels and things like that. And it was hard to keep them in my regular um, ephemera holder because you can't really see everything. You, you have to pull things out and flip through them. And so I was looking for a place where I could easily just kind of um, go through things without you know, having to dump everything out on my desk and, you know, look through it and then put it all back in an envelope or a, um, you know, a sleeve here or something like that. So I came up with this little flat lay envelope and I have loved it. I, I will say that. But one thing that's been happening is, number one, you can see here the brad that I use because I'm in and out of it so much, the brads keep breaking off and I keep having to replace the brads. So that's one thing that's driving me crazy. And then the other thing, I had put another one on the back here for like some of the words and things that I cut out of books. And this one, because some of these are so little, these are often falling out of this little envelope. So even though they seem like they're, you know, in there good, sometimes when I turn this thing over, I have bits and pieces falling out of the back. So I wanted to come up with another solution that might be number one, a little bit more secure, and number two, might hold um, up better <laughs> than having to replace this brad all the time. So this is what I came up with. So I was, um, I don't know, out watching YouTube and I found a woman, I believe her name is Paula Beardell King or uh, something like that. I will link her channel down below. This is where the idea came from for these. This is actually um, a form of Chinese art. So women used to make these little collapsible boxes and they would carry around their sewing items in them. So needles and um, little pieces of pattern paper and threads and things like that that could be stored flat. But, and I'll just show you here. So this one uh, that we're going to make you open it up and it's like this little box and you can see I have all my little bits of paper in it, but when I fold it down, it stays flat. I put my little hinge over it and when I move it around, now my hinge doesn't stay there, obviously, but you can see that it's everything is very secure in this little flat box. I absolutely love it, but yet I can open it up and then go through, you know, and find words or I cut things out of dictionaries um, oftentimes to put in collage and things like that. So this is the small little collapsible box that we're going to make. And this is the large one. So this one I decided to tie with kind of a, um, a button loop here. I don't know exactly what this is called when you, when you do this, but we have a, you know, thread that you just tie around and this one, um, holds very nicely. So, you know, it's, uh, this one holds very well together. And once again, if I open it up, you can see that I have this beautiful flat box, a flat, um, place here where I can just go through my bits of ephemera and find what I'm looking for without having to dump everything out. And then I can just make sure everything's flat, fold it back together, and then, um, you know, secure it and leave it go. So I'm very excited about doing these. I will say that um, I did a little bit of research on these boxes and um, it is, it's amazing. It is truly an art form. And I just want to warn you right now, I am no expert. So I am just doing this based on my desire to have a place, a nice flat place to keep some of my ephemera secure, some of the more little pieces that I have around. So um, I encourage you to go look up some of the interesting and beautiful um, pictures in this, um, these little collapsible boxes. Like I said, I will lo uh, link Paula's channel below for you to check out more about what she has done um, in terms of research and things like that. It's just truly amazing. So let's go ahead and get started and make some of these collapsible boxes to hold some of your ephemera. 
All right. So for the boxes, just the, the basic foldable boxes, you're going to need some paper. For our large box, we're going to use a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And for our small box, we're going to use an 8 by 8 piece of paper. Now, this was a 12 by 12 piece that I've cut down to 8 by 8. Um, but I just wanted to let you know those are the two sizes that we need for the two size boxes that we're going to make. And then you'll also probably need some glue. I'm going to probably be using my glue stick here. You'll need a ruler and scissors or a um, craft knife, whichever you're most comfortable with there. Either one um, will work just fine. And then also uh, probably a pencil to make some marks with. And I think that's all we're going to need. Um, oh, maybe a bone folder or um, an old credit card or something like that to help crease your papers down. So those are the things that we're going to need. Now let's talk just a minute about the papers. So I'm going to be using these scrapbook papers. They are single-sided scrapbook papers. So there's, there's the backs are just um, white. And you can tell they're very um, lightweight scrapbook papers. So I'm not using cardstock here. And the reason I don't want to get too heavy paper while I'm doing this is because once we start making all the folds, um, it will just become thicker and thicker and be harder to maneuver the folds around to make the boxes um, nice and crisp. So I would definitely stay with some lightweight cardstock, or I'm sorry, lightweight scrapbook paper. And like I said, this is um, probably a little bit heavier than regular printer paper or copier paper but um, it just came out of a, a paper pack and it's, you know, sturdy, but not cardstock. You definitely don't want something too thick here. So that's what we need to get started. Let's go ahead and make one of these boxes. Okay, I'm gonna start with the small box. I think it's a little bit easier to put together. So we'll start with the small one. And you can just start right from here if you want to. Um, I am going to actually do some decoration on the back because there will be some white that ends up showing on our box. And I would like to decorate that a little bit so that it's um, more matches the front of this. I mean, the, these two are very different. I would like to just kind of not have this be so much white, but you do not have to do this. This step is completely optional. And what I'm going to use to do this is I'm going to use some distress inks that kind of match my paper. So I have this Victorian velvet and I have some gathered twigs. I'm going to use a little bit of water and I'm going to use just an acrylic block that I use for rubber stamping. So um, this is going to help me apply some of this ink uh, in a nice way. And then I probably will also use some actual rubber stamps to put some decoration on there. So, but we'll see. I, I probably don't even need to really use the stamps too much. Um, I may just even keep it more plain. So to do this part, it's very easy. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my distress inks and I'm going to just add a little to the, the block. Now I am just dabbing this all over. You probably can't even see it because I can barely see it. And then what I'm going to do, I have my ink on there. I'm going to spray. And actually, before I do that, let me grab a piece of deli paper here to put this on. Okay just so I have something underneath here. And then I'm gonna take my water and just lightly spray around it. And you might be able to see now, I have some pink drops of water. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just flip this over and set it down on the paper. I'm not really gonna rub it around too much because I want it to kind of give me a little bit of a design. And so I'm just kind of stamping it down, um, you know, where it lies. I don't wanna rub it around because it may, you know, become too solid. And I don't want that. I kind of want a little, a little bit of design around. So just in a couple of different places, sometimes um, putting it down for a little longer and for a little less time. And you can see that's how it's going to look. Now I'm just going to, I'm not even going to clean this off. I'm just going to put my brown down now. And there's already a little bit of water on there still. Same thing, give it a little squirt. And then I'm just going to add it same thing, a little bit here and there around just to add some, oops, add some texture and color to the back of this. 
So, and there, there still will be obviously a little bit of white around, but I am okay with that. The brown, I think, helps give it a little bit of a um, coffee dyed look to it. So all right now I am spreading it just a little to kind of cover some of my white spots. And I'm just going to come in here with my finger like a little paintbrush and spread some of that around. And I think that looks good. And honestly, this is um, perfect for what I want. So it's not completely white anymore. And now when I, you know, start folding, if any of the white pieces are around the top, they won't be white anymore. They won't be completely white. Now I could add some um, stamps to this, like I said, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to leave it like this because this side is pretty busy. <laughs> so I don't need to worry about uh, I don't need to worry about, you know, pattern because we definitely have a lot over there. And I can see I got a little bit of color over here on this side. Must have been some down somewhere, or maybe on my deli paper. So now before we go on, you do want to let this dry completely or use your heat gun to make sure it's nice and dry. Um, when I use my heat gun, if I've only painted or put water or something on one side of the piece of paper. I'll also, um, after I'm drying for a while, I'll turn it over when it's pretty dry on this side and dry the other side, even though there's nothing really to dry over on the other side, but that will help get the paper to be flat. So I'll quite, you know, put the sound off and just, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay, so you can see now this, this side is pretty dry, but you can also see that it's not very flat and I want it to be flat. So I'm just gonna turn this over. Now you could, you know, just put some books on it or something like that, but I'm just going to take my heat gun again and heat up the backside so that it flattens this whole thing out for me. Okay, now you can see it's much flatter. It still isn't perfect, but that's okay. Off of there. Okay, so now we're ready to get started with um, doing some of our folding. So let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the side that I want to be on the inside up. So this, this is the side that there will be less shown. So there will be some shown, but it should be less um, than this side. So this is the side I want most showing, and this will be the outside of the box. So I'm going to start with this side up. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center because we're going to be folding along into the center. Now, what I'm doing is I'm lining my paper up with this line on my little mat board here, but you could certainly just do it with a ruler. So I'm going to be kind of using both. So um, I want to make sure each corner is lined up right on this line. And then I'm going to take my ruler and also line it up on that line. And then I'm just going to take my pencil and in the middle or about the middle, I'm just going to make a little, little line there. Okay. So, because now I'm going to do the same thing this way. So same thing. I'm going to line up my paper so that it's right on this line. And I'm going to line up my ruler and make another line. And you should have a little cross there. So this center point is the middle of my square. That's easy enough, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start our folds. Now we're going to fold into the center of this square. So I'm going to take one end and just very simply fold it into the center. Make sure your side edges are lined up real well and make sure that you don't go across the center Make sure you try to go um, as close to the center as you can without going over. You want it to be very even. And then you can smooth your edges with your bone folder or your credit card. And then you're going to do the same thing with the other side. And I think I'm going to open this up so it's easier for me to see. So same thing. We're going to fold into the center but not go over that little center dot. So when I put my two pieces in, um, they're touching but not... Um, overlapping. Okay. So now we're going to open it up and then we're going to do it the other way. So we folded these two sides in. Now we're going to do the top and bottom same thing. So I'm going to fold into the middle 
and fold into the middle one more time. Make sure my sides are lined up. Okay, so now it's kind of hard to see, but you should have two lines going that way and two going this way, okay? So now what we're going to do is we have to make a couple of cuts and I'm going to use my um, craft knife here, but you could certainly cut with your scissors if you wanted to. Now, what we're going to cut is we're going to cut, so we have a square in the corner here with our folds that we've made. So I'm just going to cut this one line of the square so up to where these cross, and then I'm from the other edge, I'm gonna cut down to where these cross, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So cut the same lines. We're just gonna be cutting the vertical lines here of the four squares in the corners. So we're gonna cut one here, cut one here, cut one here, and cut one here. So we're not cutting anything out, we're just making a little slice in here. Now I'm going to just um, hold my ruler up to the fold. So I'm just kind of making sure it's lined up with the fold. And then I'm going to uh, try and find, it's even hard for me to see where my fold line is here. Actually, it might be a little bit easier for me to mark with my pencil where those lines are because boy, oh boy, am I having a hard time seeing them. So let's do that so I don't overcut or undercut. So you really want to try to get right to um, the end of each of those lines. Okay, so that's better. Now I can see where my pencil marks are, and I'm just going to cut right from that pencil mark down. And from this one, since I still have my thing all lined up, right up to there. I'll make sure I got up to there. And to make it easy for me, I'm just going to flip the paper over and do the same thing because, like I said, we want to cut the same line on each side. Okay, so line it up. Well, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have our four cuts here. Okay. So now we're just going to make a quarter of a turn so that our cuts actually fold in like this. Um, and I'm doing that because it's gonna make it a little easier to show you the next fold. So for the next fold, you're gonna fold one of the sides down. And since this is the one with the flap, we can fold this up, okay? So we're just gonna fold this up like this and you're gonna mark it by looking at the center point that we made. So I'm just gonna put my finger right on that center point and I'm going to fold this up. Now when you do this, the other crease should line up right with the top of your paper or very close to it. So I want to be sure that I have a nice um, 45 degree angle here with this one, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now that I have this one folded, I should just be able to fold that right up and they should meet very close to the middle here. And once again, your second crease of your square should go right onto the upper edge of that fold, okay? So isn't that fun looking? All right, and we're gonna turn it all the way around now. So do a 180 with it, and we're gonna do the same thing with this side. So I'll show you one more time. So we're gonna fold this down, and then you're gonna take your little flap that we made. We're gonna mark the center with our finger so we know where to fold it up, or we know where to keep that edge. And then we're going to make sure, hopefully, see I already have it off a little bit, I think. We're going to fold this up so that our top line matches there. I don't think I was doing that quite right because it looks like I'm above, but let's see. Okay. No, I didn't even, look Look how off that is. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> but you can see these two don't match. So I think I need to try to refold that and try to get it um, to the middle a little bit more. And that's what I was having the problem with, I think. So I think that looks better. I think, I think, 
All right, we'll have to try it. I'm gonna do the other side and I am just going to line that up as much with the center as I can. And um, I think, you know, the other thing you have to remember is that, well, I'm human, <laughs> so it's not gonna be perfect. And as you can see there, it's not perfectly together and they are not perfectly uh, lined up here in the middle, but they're very close. So I, I think we did a good enough job here. Okay, now that we have that fold ready to go, um, I'm gonna make a couple of corner rounds. You don't have to do this. Once again, this is not um, a step that you have to do. Um, I'm just gonna do it for um, just a little bit of a different look. So it's not, it's not even really gonna show that much because um, the corner rounds are going to be against paper that's the same pattern. So it's gonna be the same side. So all of these little edges here, I'm just going to give a little rounding to. Okay, now we have our edges nice and rounded. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold in our sides just like that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to glue these little flaps down onto here, just like that, okay? So I'm going to get my glue stick out here and I'm going to, without unfolding everything, hopefully, I'm just gonna add some glue to these little flaps, whoa, hopefully to one side. And then I'm just going to fold them over, making sure I don't get them onto anything else. Okay, and then same thing over here. So let's see how it works. So when you open it up, you can see we have our inside piece. And then to collapse it down, you just push in our little side pieces and you have a nice flat box. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do, because I'm gonna be using this for stickers and ephemera and words and different things like that, I'm gonna add a bottom to this box. So I'm going to grab a piece of scrap cardstock that I have somewhere to put into the bottom of this box. Okay, I grabbed a piece of cardstock. Now this is actual cardstock. It's still pretty lightweight cardstock. It's not like it's real heavy or anything. Um, I already have you know one layer in the bottom here. I'm just adding this for some extra support. This part is also completely optional. You can stop, you know, you can stop right here. You have a, a perfect little collapsible box um, right here. But of course, we're not gonna stop there. <laughs> Let's keep going. So. The size of this is half the size of our square. So we started with an eight by eight square. We're going to cut a piece of the cardstock that is four by four. And just to be sure that my measurements weren't off, which I don't remember if you remember when I said, um, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna cut these about an eighth of an inch smaller than four inches. So I'm gonna do like three and seven eighths inches as my um, size for the inside square so that I don't have to come back and cut it down again. I'm hoping that'll be enough, but not too much on the inside there. So let's see if this um, is gonna work the way I think it's gonna work. So I'm just going to place this inside there and then my little marks that I made to start are all covered up. I love that I have some decoration on the sides there you know, that little splatter that we did, I think looks wonderful. And then this just collapses down just like that. And it's ready to go, but let's not stop there. Let's make a closure for this collapsible box that we have. So what I'm going to use to make it is a couple of two inch circles that I cut with my two inch circle punch. 
And this was just some old book page that um, I thought looked nice and distressed. And I added a stamp to it. And this was just some old packaging. So this is pretty sturdy cardboard, which is what I want here. And then I also took a scrap piece, another scrap piece of cardstock. So this is double-sided cardstock. I put a little stamp on here, and this is what I'm going to use to make a little hinge to hold um, this down. So we're gonna glue this together. Actually, let's go ahead and start that. So I added some distress around this and around this. So that's ready to go. I'm gonna use my, and actually, you know what? I'm not gonna use this. I am going to use my glue stick again because I think I want some sewing around there. I think it would be fun to have some strings hanging off the edge. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue stick and put it right in the middle, just enough to hold the paper down um, and keep it in place when I do my sewing. So I'm gonna line that up, make sure I have it on that circle nicely there. And I may even, since this is so white, I may even just take my, um, this is vintage photo, you know, it's just what's on there. I'm not even loading it up with any more distress ink. So I think I'll just, so that that's distressed just a little bit more. And then what I'm gonna do with this piece is I'm going to make a little hinge out of it. So um, this is what I'm going to use with a brad to kind of hold in place the circle. So it will, this hinge will swing out of the way um, or over top of this to hold it in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this down to about a little over a half an inch. So it looks like maybe five eighths of an inch I'm gonna cut this down to. And actually I think that might be too big. I think I am gonna go with a half an inch. Yeah, a half an inch. And I'm gonna cut three pieces. Um, I was thinking about just doubling it up, but I may want to just make this a little bit more sturdy so that you know with use it's not going to end up breaking on me or something like that now this I am going to glue together with some uh, nice sturdy glitter glue um, and I'm going to glue the three of these together and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little crocodile corner chomper to just add some um, decoration to the end. So this cloud one here, I'll, uh, I think I can show you with, let's see what I got here. The cloud one adds like these little scallops to it and it's very cute. I, I can't find it, but I'll show you when I do it. Let's first, let's glue these together just so I have that done because I, um, I don't want to have to try and stamp or um, use my crocodile on each piece and line everything up. I want to just do them all together and have it where I want it. So I am going to try to glue these so that the back of my hinge also shows kind of this old uh, paper and not the polka dot side, which, you know, you could do if you like polka dots. And I do like polka dots, but I think I already have enough patterns going on on this thing <laughs> that I think I'm going to just have this go like this. And then before I do any chomping on that, I will wait for this to dry. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I think I will go sew my circle. So I'm just going to sew right around the edge of this and have some nice strings and stuff that uh, will be loose on the top here. So I'll be right back when I do that. All right, all nice and sewn up here with some little fringy threads, which I always love little fringy threads here. So that'll be fun right here. And I think this is probably dry now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my corner chomper and I'm just going to chomp off both uh, sides. So I'll do this side first since this is probably gonna be my um, edge that 
goes against the circle. So you can, I don't know if you can see this, but that's the little scallops there that this chomper does. And then when I chomp the other side, I'm just gonna leave a little of extra space here um, so that my brad doesn't cover up my stamps. So I want to um, have them be showing, I think. Let's see if I can kind of do it the same way I did the other one. All right, so now this is our little hinge. And once we have this on, this hinge will go on top to kind of hold everything together and hold my box closed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch the hole in my tag so that I can line up and figure out where I want the hole on my uh, collapsible box there. Okay, so now I have a hole right in there ready to go. And actually, I think what I'm going to do first before I even do that is I'm going to attach my circle because when I do that, then I'll be able to really determine where I want this to go um, so that it's, you know, in the right place. So we'll put my bread and my little hinge here over to the side. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to glue the circle down. I'm going to glue half of the circle down to this half of the collapsible box. So um, I'm going to flip it like this, and actually I'm going to flip it right upside down like this so that it's right where I want it. And then I'm going to use my glue, and I may use my three-in-one glue for this one. And I'm just going to put my glue on the side that I want it glued on. So this helps, um, helps me line it up without, you know, going over where maybe I don't want it to be. And I'm going to be pretty generous with my glue, at least in the middle part. I don't want it to squeeze out too much on the sides. And now I'm going to flip it back over like this and put it down in the halfway where I want it. And before I let it completely dry, I will just double check. Like you can see here, there was a little glue that seeped out on the side there. So I'm just, I want to be sure that, you know, I don't have glue seeping out, that this circle is going to be gluing down to where I don't want it to be gluing down. So I may see if I can grab a little scrap of paper here. This here. And I'll just put this in here. Actually, I might even open it up a little bit if I can. Make this a little bit bigger to catch any glue or something so that I can kind of press it down here. I don't want to leave that paper in there because once again, if there's glue that is seeping out, it's going to glue this into my um, little box here and I don't want that either. Okay, so now I'm probably gonna try and leave this open a little bit to let it dry before we move on. So let's let that dry. All righty, I think we're nice and dry now. So what I'm gonna do is take my little tab and I realize I did not distress it. So I'm going to do that to cover up my edges a little bit and maybe even just put a little on top so that it kind of matches my circle in the middle there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, just kind of put this down and see where I want it. So um, we're going to put the tab on the right hand side where the circle is not glued down because that's what's going to hold everything together. So we could put it right at the side here. We could kind of put it up here or we could put it down here. So um, I kind of like it down towards the bottom, I think. So I'm just going to put it down there. Now you need to make a mark. So I'm going to take my pencil and just mark where I had punched my hole for my brad. And now I have that hole ready to go. I know right where I'm going to punch it. Now, I don't have a hole punch. Like this is what I use to punch that, but that's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna take my paper piercer that I use for sewing signatures and things, and very carefully, I'm going to punch a hole. 
And if you do this, just be careful that you don't punch a hole in your finger. <laughs> so you want to be real careful when you do that. All right. So now I have my hole just through the box there. And I can put my brad in. So I'm going to put my brad first through my little hinge here. And then I'm going to put it through the box, maybe. If I can get both of them through there, that would be helpful. And then I'm going to open up the brad on the inside. And I'm going to um, try to be sure that I'm not opening it too tightly. And the only reason I'm doing that not real tight is so that I have some um, give for my hinge so that I can, you know, move it back and forth to go over the top here. So there we go. Now you can see I have a little hinge on top of my box here and it is all ready for me to start using and filling up. So I like to cut out words from books that I use in my journaling or on collage and things like that. And I think this will be a perfect little spot for me to add them into there. All right, that's how you make a small collapsible box. Now I decided to split this video into two parts just to make it easier for you to um, decide which box you'd like to make. So, and just to keep the videos a little bit shorter. So that was this one. And now at part two, which I will link below in the notes and also up in the corner up here, um, is how we're going to make this one, a tutorial on making the larger collapsible box. So let's get to it. <laughs> 